All right, here's a quick rundown on why I'm replacing the PTC heater on my 2018 Tesla Model 3 rear-wheel drive. In the previous video on this playlist, I bought the Tesla Model 3 from a dealer without the heater working. I knew it was not working before I bought it. And now I'm just trying to roll the dice and replace this heater with a used one, hoping that's the problem. I've never worked on a Tesla before, never owned a Tesla before, so bear with me as I stumble through this process and maybe you'll learn something along the way too. In case you're wondering what instructions I'm following, you can get Tesla's own repair manuals for free on Tesla's website service. Here's the first couple of steps, like I said, and the shop time for this is only an hour long. I'm kind of blown away that the whole R&R procedure for this is just an hour. So that's encouraging for an EV newbie like myself and a Tesla newbie like myself. The first step in the Tesla procedure manual is to put the car on a lift. I don't have a lift, so I try to put it on ramps in the front. I think it's time to do the apron at the back of the trunk, and then I'm gonna pop the seat cover off the back seat. All right, popping the front. Pop that open there. Oh, and it pops right up. It says there's 12 fasteners. And I was like, what are they talking about? It's all smooth, but then I just yanked on it and realized, oh, the fasteners are just pop-off fasteners. So I think at some point it says to move the seats all the way forward. I'm guessing that's to get the rear bench out easily, so. All right, the procedure calls for two tabs under the front of this lower back seat to be moved to the left of the cars. Right for the camera, but left for, all right, there's one that's easy. Just a little finger that sticks out from the bottom of the seat cushion, and there's two. Lift up and pull out. That was easy. All right, to get this one off, there's a little tab right where the end of my pinky is right here where the end of my pinky is you push that down towards the wires and then slide it out another plug down here you can barely see it but it's the same as the other side up it out the same way and then you can take the seat out remove the left hand console side panel carpet all right, moving the seats back again so I can access the panel. It's just to the right-hand side of the seat and to the right-hand side of the accelerator pedal. All right, it wasn't immediately clear to me how to do the next step. However, I found out if I stick my plastic remover tool up here, rather than sticking the tool down here, I'm able to slide it down a little bit and pry it away. The manual recommends you move it. You remove it starting from the back, so I'm trying to do that. And it's working that wasn't so bad and of course it's the reverse procedure or at least the mirror image procedure of the same thing on the other side all right so we remove the center console side carpet next we're removing these end caps here looks like you just pop them off And then same for the A pillar middle. A pillar middle. Oh, okay, right here next to the dash. All right. Let me try these end caps and A pillar middle. All right, you can see where I am in the car. This end cap here. That's off. This as well. Gently, I hope, pops off. Good. All right, the A pillar middle is removed. The end cap is removed. Remove the lower A-pillar trim. Probably could have done that just now. All right. Oh, there is one push pin right here. The black thing, not the silver bolt, but the black thing. I gotta pop that out. Gentle. Ah, easy. Release the clips that attach the passenger footwell cover to the vehicle. Disconnect the wiring harness connectors from the pedal light and emergency speaker. Remove the footwell cover. 
release the pedal light. And it looks like this one needs to come out too. I got the four pins out. And then we gotta unplug this guy. Okay, that was easy. Just push down in here and pull out. And let's see how this guy is. It's the emergency speaker. Embarrassingly, I haven't been able to get this speaker clip off. So it might just live here for a bit until I proceed further and try to find this part number. So I'm gonna leave that there. I also, I'm afraid I'm gonna break it. I cracked the, uh, the plug a little bit, so I'm just gonna Leave it as is, it's still connected, still working, so I'm just gonna leave it as is for now. All right, just going through the last couple of steps. Here's the vehicle off procedure, loosening the 12 volt nut, taking the penthouse cover off, popping off the electrical harness from the high voltage controller connector. And then wait two minutes for the electrical system to fully discharge. Go to the menu, safety, and power off. Next, we're to remove the negative terminal from the 12 volt battery in the front and pull it off. Done. Next, to remove the 12 volt low voltage connector from the main battery. I take off this foam penthouse cover and I pop this off somehow. You heard a clunk there, a thunk. As I disconnected it, that was normal. These gloves were probably overkill, especially since I was touching it with my bare hand anyway, but I am going to cover this up to prevent accidental connections. And All right, next using my double layer of high voltage gloves, I take this cover off. The, there's the huge plug down here that disconnects the high voltage. I'm going to disconnect that using one hand. The manual asks that I have something to cover it up. There's some logic cover or something, but I don't have that, so I'm gonna use this. All right, we're under the front of the car now. This is the front aero shield. We have to take off nine 10 millimeters, nine 10 millimeter bolts on the front and on the back, and I think one in the middle. And then we've got two 15 millimeter nuts, not bolts, but nuts for this time, on the back side as well. I use a drill because it's way faster, especially being under the car. Who wants to be under here any longer than they have to? And I just have the attachment on there that lets me use the socket. My wireless battery drill setup was too weak to loosen these up. So I'm loosening them up by hand and then I'll put the drill on them. All right, one of the trickier parts of this job for me, although it shouldn't have been tricky, was undoing this high voltage line from under the car. This red part had to be pulled back. In fact, I pulled back and then twisted it a little bit with the screwdriver that I popped it out, so this red thing fell out. I don't think you need to do that. And then theoretically, you're supposed to be able to push this orange button right here down like this. That wasn't enough to get the big high voltage clip off from the PTC heater. So what I did was I stuck a screwdriver here. If there's a plug, imagine there's a plug surrounding this. I stuck a small, small screwdriver in between the plug that removed the female end and this male end and just kind of pried up a little bit. And this tiny little clip here, this little plug, that was pretty easy. Just has a red button on it. I don't know if you can see it. There's a red button right here. You just push down on that and pull it out and wait. But make sure you're 
I'm disconnecting the right one because there's two here that are very similar. After you do that, you pop the all these mounts. You just slide them off the threaded screws that are studded into the into the chassis of the car. You just slide them off. I used a combination of my fingers and my flathead screwdriver. It is worth noting that so far I have skipped step 16, removing the passenger knee airbag. I was frankly just lazy, didn't want to remove it, and removing the airbag requires that you replace some bolts with some new bolts. I don't have those, don't feel like ordering them. So I'm trying to just keep the airbag in place due to laziness and not having the correct parts. These just kind of squeeze down and slide off one at a time. They're a little tricky. I have just had to squeeze them a few different times. Sometimes I get them in two seconds, sometimes I have to fiddle with them for 20 seconds. But while on the driver's side, I undid the plug that goes in here. It's just a matter of pulling this gray clip back, this gray part back, and then pulling on it, wiggling it out. I also undid the round clip that holds, it's like a harness, that holds this cable to the body so I pop and of course I've removed the two bolts here with the eight millimeter the same two are coming up on the other side and so now that I'm on the passenger side I'll do the same thing and take these out these are eight millimeter I use a socket the wrench did not fit on there all right I pried the grommet out using one of these body tools it didn't do much in fact I broke one of the forks but as I pried it up like this with my other hand, I grabbed the rubber and just twisted it out and pulled it through. So, so now I should be able to pull this high voltage line through the firewall. Getting there. Yes, very satisfying. As you can see, I also have removed the nut that goes for this little black wire here. I also took an eight millimeter on the other side. That's the driver's side in the US. And I removed these bolts here. And now I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Now we're down to the point where I've gotten these bolts off and I think it's just hanging free. And now I have to cut the side panel off this plastic green panel here it's green in the image it's black in the car and my car must have been untouched so far because this is still intact it looks like what you do is you slide a razor blade carefully along this green rectangle being careful not to cut the red area then this green panel you've cut out gets removed and then you have better access to the panel to slide it out towards the camera is what i'm guessing now it's just a matter of slicing here in between these two edges, or maybe not in between. I think I'm going to go on the inner edge of this panel. So draw a line from this R directly over to here and slice without crossing any, any uh, walls or crossing any beams or anything like that. I think I have to slice along here as well. So I ended up using this box cutter. It worked great even though it's rusty. Went down here, went across the top, down the side. I should say that as soon as I cut the first inch or so right, right here, the PTC dropped down to the ground by itself. All right, don't tell Barb, but to get the last couple of pieces off the bottom here, I actually got a kitchen knife, it's serrated, and just cut vertically like this. And then like this, it went through like butter. And now I think it's ready to come out. Let's see, shall we? Cross your fingers that we don't need to remove the airbag. Oh, it's gonna come out, I think. Oh, it's gonna be close, maybe not. Yes. All right, you don't need to remove the airbag, folks. Quick note on the first couple of steps of the new procedure for reinstalling says install the ceiling plate on the new PTC heater. I'm guessing the ceiling plate is this thing right here. If you fail to do that, you might get leaks. All right, here we go. I got it lined up most of the way in. Carefully slide it in. Kind of wiggle it around these burrs. Oh, geez. 
something's already hanging it up. The two screws on this side that hold it up in place. I'll do this nut and connector right here. And I gotta do something, or I could do something about this cover here. I was careful to keep this in one piece. You know, I could just maybe like tack it back into place with some glue. All right, so I've got this nut on here loose. The ground nut, I'm guessing it is. I've got these guys here, these two bolts in here loose as well. Uh, and I did the same thing on the other side. I did want to point out that there's a lot that could hold you back here. For example, if this grounding strap is wedged between the HVAC housing and the PTC heater, of course that's going to slow you down. This orange one and the black grounding strap also like to wedge themselves between the HVAC housing and the PTC heater, even to the right hand side of this bolt. So I had to pull them back like this to the left, pull this back like this to the left, and then put the bolt in. There's even a little black felt cable here, cord here. It's felt wrapped. There it is. And that was wrapped in there too. Again, wedging itself between the PTC and the HVAC housing. So all of those would have prevented this from going all the way in. So I'm slowly tightening these four bolts on both sides and just observing it as it goes in to make sure I'm not pinching anything or squeezing anything uh, before I get too far. Like I said, make sure that little plug down there is exposed. Tighten up the bolts slowly, carefully checking, and then you can plug it back in. And don't forget the little harness round uh, C-clip thing that holds this cord to the main structure of another cord. As I wrap up the initial steps of putting this back together again, I wanted to point out two things. One, the installation of the new PTC unit is pretty much the reverse of the removal, as you'd expect. Also, before you can move on to the next few phases you'll see here, remember that you'll have to carefully and safely reconnect the high voltage on the backseat battery, reconnect the lower voltage on the backseat battery, and also reconnect the 12 volt battery under the frunk. All right, well, the heater's in but I'm still getting the same error. I did a soft reset using the two button on the steering wheel method. That didn't do anything. Now I found this method where you might be able to either using the service center Wi-Fi or just at home more recently, get the firmware updated on your own. So I'm gonna try this. The screenshot I just showed you said service should be capitalized. Later they said service should not be capitalized. Okay. Wow, all right. Okay, software reinstall, maybe. All right, I'm gonna do it. YOLO, wish me luck. Oh boy. Oh God. I don't know what I'm doing, but let's see what happens. I'll be back. Well, long story short, updating the firmware also did not solve the heater problem, even after installing this new used PTC unit. Stay tuned for more updates as I proceed through this problem and try to figure out what's going on. Maybe it's the fuse for the PTC heater under the back seat, maybe something else, not sure yet, but stay tuned to the Mind of Matter channel and you'll find out with me.